Today we are going to be going over my custom FTS lift kit and how I'm going to be converting it from a 15 inch lift to a 20 plus inch lift. We're going to go over every single piece that came with the kit and every other separate little thing I've ordered to convert it to a 20 inch lift kit and to rebuild the whole front end. So to start off, this is the front cross member and this is the rear cross member, obviously. From bolt hole to bolt hole is 15 inches on both, 15 and 15. It comes with this brace strut right here, this brace that bolts into four on the front, four on the back, and on the rear cross member, as you can see, the upper control arms don't mount to the stock upper control arm location. They mount to the rear cross member and then to this custom drop bracket that you bolt into the frame. So it is not like a bulletproof lift kit. It drops it further than a bulletproof lift kit does with their upper control arm drop brackets. And by dropping the upper control arms that far, I'm not gonna have to use ball joint spacers or any of that. As you can see, normal ball joints, no ball joint spacers, no anything, because this bracket right here and this drop down brings all the angles back to factory. It also came with these tubular upper control arms. I wasn't gonna use them at first. I was gonna use my KSP upper control arms that are forged, but these are at a specific angle so I have to match them to the ones on the truck now and see if I can use those other ones because if not, I have to use these. It also came with extended braided brake lines. I'm not sure how long these are. I'm assuming 15 inches. No, way more than that. Yeah, it's way more than 15 inches of extended brake lines for both sides. Now moving a little further back, it came with all the pieces to extend my steering, obviously, because you can't go too high without extending it. Then these are the front diff drop brackets. From bolt hole to bolt hole is just over 15 inches, so it'll drop it down 15 inches. And to go along with these drop brackets, I bought these. These are extreme angle extended CV axles. So basically what that means is a stock CV axle has an angle of 27 degrees, no 23 degrees of downward angle until it maxes out. These have a downward angle of 47 degrees before they max out. Obviously I'm not going to run them at max angle, but this will just ensure that nothing happens to the CV axles once I convert this lift from a 15 to a 20. So that five inch raise will not affect these at all. These did not come with the lift, but like I said, I am rebuilding the entire front end of the truck as well, just so everything is brand new so I know everything has the same amount of miles on it. These are the Moog tie rod ends and tie rods, brand new. So we got one for each side, obviously. As you can see right here, these are the stock knuckles. I did have to order these separately. These are the stock steering knuckles, so a lot shorter than the six inch ones I have now. I don't know if you can see these back here, but brand new Moog stabilizer bar and links as well. And then I also ordered brand new lower control arms for both sides. So the base lift kit did not come with these coilovers that you see. They came with these 15 inch lift spacers to put on top of your stock strut. That is why I custom ordered these 3.0 reservoir coilovers. 
that are adjustable all the way down to here. Those had to be ordered separately, they didn't come with the lift kit. It was an extra couple thousand dollars for those. And with those, as you see, they bolt in sideways, not like a normal coilover does. So they had to make these coilover conversion brackets right here, which mounts these to the stock mounting location of the truck. So that's gonna bolt like that, that's gonna bolt there. Then this bolts somewhere on top, I'm not sure which way yet, and basically holds one side of this, so that way the other side of the reservoir sits in the other side, either the top or the bottom. I haven't decided yet. And these are made out of billet. These are billet pieces that are powder coated black, as you can see. They are billet. And if you would believe me, this piece of metal right here was $25, I think. And all it does is you hook it into the coilover and this is, and then you put the wrench here or the ratchet here and that's how you adjust the coilovers with this tool right here, this piece of metal right here. So now let's move midway back. It comes with a front drive shaft spacer, both sides. So I will have working four wheel drive and a front drive shaft on this 20 inch lift. And then if you move to the side of that, it comes with these tubular, track bars with the mounts that mount right to the rear cross member. Got one on each side. These are supposed to go in the back more, so we'll talk about that after. And then these are the angled mounts for the rear of the track bar. This is the drive shaft spacer for the drive shaft. And then these are the 2.5 or the 3.0 reservoir rear coilovers that are in chrome. They're chrome plated or chrome, I believe chrome plated. With these billet FTS reservoirs to hold them together, which is gonna look sick. Brake lines for the rear as well, two brake lines. And these I ordered separately. These are 15 inch U-bolts because I'm going to have to be able to go over the leaf springs, which are three and a quarter inches. Then you got the five inch block I ordered, which that would make it eight and a quarter inches. Then you got three inches of actual rear differential diameter. So that's eight, nine, 10, 11. And then you got the bottom mount for the track bar. So there's gonna be a good three inches of bolt sticking out beneath the track bar bracket at the bottom. So that is plenty. And we are waiting for the five inch blocks. They will be here tomorrow, but they do have a five degree of angle to keep the pinion angle perfect how it should be. So they're not exciting. They're just metal blocks with a five degree angle. You've probably seen rear blocks before. Then we got all of other hardware, as you can see, and all the uh, rubber polyurethane bushings and everything else, all right there. So you might be asking yourself, how am I gonna turn this 15 inch lift kit into a 20 inch plus lift kit? Well, if you look here from the top of this bracket to this bolt hole is seven and a half inches. So if I set these coilovers, which they're adjustable. So if I set these coilovers to 14 inches of lift and then I add on top these seven inch conversion brackets, I will have 20 inches of 20 plus inches of lift. You might be saying, oh, what about your control arm angle? That's gonna be perfectly fine because these, like I said in the beginning, get dropped down to stock and a five inch difference is really not gonna affect the control arm downward angle. It's not gonna be that harsh on it, especially because this drops it back to stock and everything's gonna be perfectly fine. And you might be saying, oh, okay, that's 20 inches in the front. What about the rear? Well, these are complete 15 inch leaf springs that, like I said, I am then going to be putting a five inch block underneath, which will make it 20 with a five degree angle. So that way it'll keep the pinion angle how it's supposed to be. So that is how I'm going to achieve 20 in the rear. No, you are not gonna be able to stretch your lift kit to 20 inch of lift 
like I'm doing without all the proper drop downs and the proper everything. So don't try it. Don't try to be that high. Just go the proper route. Don't stretch your kit. Do it the proper way. Don't hurt yourself or break your truck trying to be big. If you want to be big, you got to pay to play. Everything here is getting chrome plated slash dipped and powder coated. I am getting a custom front cross member overlay made. So hint, hint for that. So the whole cross member is going to be blue with a chrome overlay. The upper control arms are going to be chrome on both sides. These are going to be chrome. I'm going to keep the FTS chrome and I'm going to powder coat these blue. These are going to be blue. That's going to be blue. That's going to be blue. That's going to be blue. Those are going to be blue. Those bars are going to be blue. Those brackets are going to be chrome. Same thing with those mounts right there. That's going to be chrome. Those are going to be blue. Same thing on this side. These are going to be chrome. I don't know if I can chrome these or these yet. So if I can't, those will also be blue. These are going to be blue. And every single bolt, every single nut, every single everything will either be chromed or powdered. So not a single bolt is going to go untouched on this lift kit because I am doing it properly. I'm If I spent this much money on this lift kit, to be 20 plus inches, I'm going to make it show quality, better than show quality, and I'm going to touch every single nut and bolt on this truck and on this lift kit. So I really do hope I went into enough detail for you guys. If you have any more questions, let me know down below in the comments or go over to my TikTok or Instagram and ask me questions there. But I'm very excited. There's gonna be a lot more videos on this lift kit because I am installing them myself and everything still needs to be powdered in chrome so i'm going to make videos on that and stay tuned for the installation video because that one's going to be a banger trust me very trust me when i say but i want to thank everyone for watching make sure to like comment subscribe if you have any tips or tricks or anything i should do to the truck let me know down below in the, and hit that subscribe button that share button and that like button have a good day